Hello everyone, in this video we will see how to connect an LED array via shift register to the Arduino and then we will be creating five different sketches in the Arduino ID for getting effects such as shifting one way, shifting back and forth, gradually increasing the shift speed, turning on and filling LEDs randomly. Before we start, I'd like to mention that I will not be giving the details and working principle of the shift register here since I had shown it in detail in another video. If you'd like to see it, please click on the link above. In our setup, we'll connect 8 LEDs over 330 ohm current limiting resistors to the 8 outputs of the shift register. We'll connect the VCC and ground pins of the shift register to VCC and ground pins on the Arduino. We'll connect pin 10 SR clear active low to VCC in order to avoid clearing the shift register. And we'll connect active low output enable pin, pin 13, to ground to enable output constantly. Then we'll connect pin 14, serial pin of the shift register, to the 12th pin of the Arduino. And pin 12, the storage register clock pin, to the 10th pin of the Arduino. And finally we'll connect pin 11, serial clock pin, to the 11th pin of the Arduino. Here I drew the circuit in Fritzing so that you can set up your circuit easily. Now let's open Arduino IDE and see our examples. Before going through the sketches, I'd like to say that links to all five sketches can be found in the video description. In this first and the simplest example, we will be shifting one bit through the shift register. First, we define the pin numbers for the storage register clock, shift register clock, and serial data pin as 10, 11, and 12. This setup will be the same for all the five examples that we will see. Then we define an 8 element array which has the content as 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. If you convert these numbers to binary, you will see that they all have a single 1 bit in their structure. We will use this to demonstrate a shift vision on the LED array. Then in the void setup part, we define these three ports as output and create a serial connection so that we will be able to see what we are sending to the serial port on our serial monitor as well. Here I'd like to mention that I'll use PuTTY instead of the built-in serial monitor because in PuTTY I can increase the font size and change the appearance of the serial output. In the loop part we are creating a for loop to send each of the numbers present in the numbers array and before using the built-in shift out function which sends the data to the pin indicated with the first argument and by the shift register clock pin indicated in the second argument we set the storage register clock pin's value as low. After using the shift out function we set the storage register clock high in order to insert the values of the shift register to the storage register. In the next two lines I print the same number element to the serial monitor. And we give a short delay in order to observe the output. Now let's run the sketch and see how it works. In the second example, we will shift our numbers array back and forth. You can see that the only difference with the first example is that includes a second for loop that does the shift of the numbers array in the opposite direction. Let's run the code and see the output. In this third example, we do the back and forth shift once again, but this time we are increasing the speed in each cycle. We do this by dividing the delay duration with a number that increases in each increment of the indice J. Let's see what it will look like. In this fourth example, we'll leave the shifting of the single bit and we are going to send the elements of the number array randomly. We do this by using the random function and we define the limits as 0 and 8. Remember that 8 is excluded. Let's see how it works. In this last example, we'll fill in the 8 LEDs randomly. This is probably the most complex of these five examples, yet it's still simple. The method is as we randomly send an element of the numbers array, we delete that element by inserting the next element to it and doing this until the last element and setting the last element's value to zero. Then we reduce the number of random number interval in each step. Now let's see how this code works.
This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Bye.